we're going to move on to supercomputing basics then. We call high performance computing, we, call it, we have a few names for it, high performance computing or HPC is basically using the biggest, fastest machines that are out there and to accomplish tasks. And we do this to make the computer act like one big computer. We have a whole bunch of computers. We have over 150 computers, uh, 3,500 cores. Everybody knows what a core is? This means yes, this means no? No? I, I saw somebody say no. That's fine. Uh, that's why we need to go over these kind of things. Um, a core is what, back when I was going to school, was, was what a CPU was. It's the brain inside the system. Uh, it used to be like one core per chip, and now most chips have two or four cores inside there. So if you buy a, a, a desktop with an i3, it's going to have two cores in there. If you have an i7, it'll have four cores inside there. That's the chips that, that are doing all the math that makes a computer a computer. And all, all computers come real, real down to math on the inside, right? Even typing something up, it's saying, oh, there's some math going on that I need to make this pixel white and this pixel black and this pixel green, and that's all math operations to make that happen. So a core is kind of the brains inside there. So most of you, like I say, your desktops and, and laptops will have either two or four cores. We have some machines that have 80 cores in a single box, and we have over 3,500 cores. Actually, it's not quite 3,500. I think if we had, if you count just the compute nodes plus all our other stuff, we have, we have somewhere over 3,500. Um, for memory, you know, your laptop probably has four or eight gigs of RAM. If you have a big gaming system, it might have 16 gigs of RAM. We have some machines that have over a terabyte of RAM. And we have over 26,000 terabytes on Bayacat when you put it all together. So, and then we use some, some high-speed networking to put everything together to make it act like it's one big computer. Now, I say act like one big computer. There is one big caveat in there, and that is... Throwing more resources at something that's not meant for, to help that is not going to make your job run any faster. Um, I, 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 I'll use the example of R because that's probably one of the one we see most of. R is what we call single-threaded. It can only use one core at a time. So you can go in and say, I want to use 20 cores and I want to run my R program. But... Since R is not meant to use more than one, you'll use one core, and, and, you'll re, and you'll have 19 sitting there reserved for you that you are not using for anything else. So that's, that's, that's the caveat. Just adding more resources won't make your program run faster. You have to have programs that are meant to run in parallel, and that's what Dave's going to talk about on Wednesday. But for right now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a tour of BayoCat so you guys can see kind of what's going on. So I'm going to take this off for a moment, and we're going to go upstairs. Before we get back into BeoCat specific stuff, pretty much everybody has a, uh, and, uh, and us included, have the support pages. I want to reiterate using these things. These support pages will give you all sorts of help for, for what you need. Um, for instance, there is a software, writing in installed software here. This shows the kind of, some of the software that we have installed here. Some, uh, we, don't, we list all the packages here, uh, node package list. I'm not going to go through those because there's somewhere over 150 of them. But you can see we have a lot of stuff that we install already. Some of the stuff that people have uh, biggest questions about and, uh, and things that we... Uh, have had to do some a, a few special things. They end up here. Um, I'm gonna make this bigger too. So. There we are. So you guys can see what's going on. And um, Open MPI. Dave's gonna talk about Open MPI on Wednesday. That's if you're programming for multiple uh, multiple machines of how to program for multiple machines. Uh, R. We give some directions for R. We have a lot of people that like to use R. Um, it is not particularly well adapted for supercomputing use. And in particular, that the packages that you have, some people need one particular version. Some people need another particular version. And they're not compatible with each other. 
So we have some directions here on how to uh, install your R packages. Java, we get the question probably what, once every two or three weeks on average of, hey, why don't you have the newest version of Java installed? We do. There's a special uh, process you have to go through to change your version of Java. It's not the default, the newest version is not the default, but it is available. So we make sure that we have those up there, and this is, how, and this is directions of how to set your Java. So if you're going to be doing stuff in Java, make sure you note this page. Python, we have several different Python uh, interpreters. Um, and it, it too has some special requirements. It's called virtual environments. That, and, and we have more than one time that people have not paid attention to this step. You have to log out and log back in or else it won't work once you get to this point. And some examples of that. Perl also, we, do, we, we see a lot of Python light of Perl. And uh, they have, uh, again, different requirements, different ways you need to go through and submit your jobs. So if you're using one of those packages in particular, uh, make sure you check out the support pages. We do have some videos uh, in particular of, uh, of installing software. Oh, thank you. It's always good to have a boss that has your back. Or at least has, or at least has your coffee. Mm -hmm. No, it's better if I have the coffee. Uh, but there is a video on there on installing some of your own software. Um, there, most of the software you see out there will give you like a canned solution of yum install this or apt-get install that. Those won't work on our system. So you kind of have to go through and you have to grab the source files. You have to install it yourself. And there's some, some tricky things you have to do. That training video in particular will, will give you an example that I gave during this, this class last time of, of how to install software. You can talk to Dave too. And actually, um, if you have software that is tricky to install, please add it to this page. This is, again, that's, this is the purpose of having a wiki, so you guys can help each other out. And, you know, we see some of it. We don't see all of it. You know, some, some things are pretty easy and you don't, doesn't need much documentation, but there are, there are several uh, software packages out there that if you've had a particularly difficult time getting it done and you've got it, put it, put it here in the support wiki so other people can help, uh, can can take advantage of that. So we're not duplicating work. We're all, we're all getting along here. We're, we, we're, we're not in competition with each other. We are all in the same boat. We're trying to get to the same place. So that's been our philosophy from the beginning is that we're all trying to get to the same place. So let's, let's work together as much as we can. This is some of what I'll go over on Wednesday to helping you to understand how to install uh, your own software. Uh, we want you to install software uh, because we know the science best about it, but if you can't install it or have trouble, then you come to us and we'll help you with it. But we at least want you to understand how to go about uh, installing it, and I'll, I'll go over some of the basics on Wednesday. Since it's installed, it, everyone can use it. Right, right. Now, when you install it in your home directory, you can either let everybody else use it or not. And, but it's tricky if you're relying on other people's software because they might update it and you didn't know it, or they might be in the process of updating it and you didn't know it. So it's better to have your own copy, but using somebody else's, you know, set of instructions to get there, unless, unless they've told you that they're going to do this and you're working together. I mean, obviously, that we, we have a group, a BioInfo group, that has their own whole set of stuff that they take care of. And they keep track of within themselves who's using it and who's, I mean, they, they open it up for anybody to use. But really, it's their group, and 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 uh, they, they'll. But they will. Uh, they'll tell everybody in their group when they're going to be updating software and things like that. So, they, so everybody within that group knows about it, and they'll let anybody use it. But uh, it might be a good idea to let them know that you are if you're going to do, use something like that. And here's the other part that we like to really point out. Um, Email, write this down, bayocat at cis.ksu.edu. 
That's, that email goes to Adam and Dave and I, all three of us. And whoever happens to have the fastest and, and most direct knowledge of that, sometimes we'll leave it, you know, if it's a question. We kind of have our realms of expertise. So, you know, if it's a particularly quick, tricky question on Python, we'll let Adam answer it because Adam knows everything there is to know about Python. No pressure. <laughs> um, when it comes to code optimization, we let Dave do that. I get the quick and easy ones. I don't know what I do. <laughs> Shh. Um, but seriously, uh, asking, asking a good question here, uh, the best thing you can do is if you are, are working on a particular problem, especially if you have errors, send those errors. Uh, put in the details, job IDs, commands you ran, working directory, program versions, those kinds of things will help us out as much as anything else being able to find your information and, and be able to track it down. So before you, before you send the email, write, say write the email address down, but go to this page to, to, uh, to do that. Try not to email us directly. We rely heavily on email filtering. So if you send to us directly instead of to the group, it kind of gets lost in the shuffle a lot of times. So make sure you send to that address. Even if you know who's going to answer it, it goes into our account, uh, our, our ticket tracking system. So we, so we know, we make sure we, keep, we get on top of all the answers. And we even have, if, if any of you like chat servers, we're on chat all day while we're here, and so you can ask questions there also. Those are all on there. Um, that pretty well does it for supercomputing in general. Any questions before we move on to submitting jobs?